Hello everyone and welcome to my build video where I will talk about my Mechabellum unit setup build and why I go with the unit abilities that I go with. And yeah, if you want to have a basic overview video about all the units, I did one about uh, of those before. You can find the link in the corner up top. And yeah, today we're going to talk more about my specific specializations for these units and why I go with the four tech configurations here that I go with for each of but these before units. Before we go into this, one quick look at the first Mechabellum tournament, which will happen on the 10th of June and start there at 3 p.m. CST. Everybody with above 1,500 points can sign up and there will be a prize pool as well. And it says here 50 points of price, dollars of prize pool, but by now it's already up to 150 and due to the, to the crowdfunding where even there are options to add money for free to the prize pool, it can go higher. It will be a single elimination tournament uh, with best of one games in the first three rounds and then in the semifinals and the finals there will be best of three games. All the schedules to be found here as well and all the further rules. So yeah, check it out guys. Everybody is welcome. Would love to have you. And yeah, match we know here. We have crowdfunding where we already have $150 in. Really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to have a bit more of a competitive team for Mechabellum as well. That I go with for each of these units. And yeah, we're gonna once more start here with the Fortress. And here I have Barrier, Elite Marksman, Anti-Air Barrage, and Fang Summoning. And the reasoning for these are uh, the barrier, because having it's one of the two units can have a barrier, and uh, having the barrier is one of the major selling points of the fortress because that stops AoE abilities from hitting your low hit point units that even can stop nukes. And if the nuke lands on the barrier, it will, the barrier will prevent the nuke from damaging the units below it. Though usually the barrier falls before the nuke lands. Um, so, barrier, super important ability here. And always must have on the fortress, no matter what you do with the other abilities. This one always is a must have. And then I go with Elite Marksman because Elite Marksman can be really cool with the fortress if you have a build where you get one of them early. And then uh, it levels up. And then you give it Elite Marksman, and then it gets, first of all, more range, which is nice. But also, the 30% extra damage means that it really one shots basically everything. Like it already does the good damage and it one hits. A lot of the mid-sized units, if they're the same level or lower, but with Elite Marksman, it means that it absolutely murders other uh, giant units. It murders other um, units with combined hit points, for example. Like if there are any steel bolts with combined hit points and so on, it kills those really nicely as well. And you often sp play against steel bolts when you play fortresses, so being able to eliminate them can be quite nice. And the Elite Marksman is the best in my eyes for that. You could have double shot as well for damage, but that one reduces the rate of fire and I'm not a big fan of that. So Elite Marksman it is for me. Then Anti-Air Barrage, a ability that often it can be absolutely game deciding, as especially if you want to have a build where the Fortress is about to decide the game early on. Uh, Fortress tanks pretty nicely against Overlords, tanks pretty nicely against wasps and still even against phoenixes it does a good job by just being beefy and uh, the anti-air barrage allows you to also hit back to them and making this unit here a pretty strong counter against low level um overlords and so on it doesn't go up it doesn't scale up with level like some other damage ability do so it in the late game it might fall off a bit but it also is a cheap ability. For 200 points, if you get two fortresses, every single uh, enemy phoenix is basically dead once they come in range. Every single enemy uh, wasp gets killed off as well. Like, you kill a whole swarm of wasps with this ability, and it deactivates one of the weaknesses of the fortresses, which is that the main attack only hits ground, so that is really fantastic. And then my last ability here, with the fangs, is another one that counters one of its weaknesses, which is that it is a giant single unit, so something like melting points and so on are pretty strong against it. And the Fang spawn summoning allows you to 
give those melting points, those steel balls, some extra targets that they have to chew through that they are not efficient against before they hit you. Plus it goes well with the barrier because the barrier protects the fangs uh, early on from other damage so they don't get killed off super quickly. So these two are a nice combo as well. And then the other thing that goes with this is that you often play fangs with fortresses. Like you build fortresses in a strategy where you already have fangs as they have the same speed and so on. So um, those fangs that you summon will then also profit from the fang upgrades that you did on the others. Like if you gave them the shield upgrade, these fangs here will have that as well and be even tankier. Or if you give them the ignite, they will burn enemy hit points away as well. All of that quite nice too. So yeah, let's move on to the next unit, which is the Marksman. And the Marksman, I have a pretty standard loadout as well, I would say. Um, the one debatable ability here is Double Shot versus a Shooting Squad, which you sometimes see as well. Quick Reload doesn't really make sense. The Marksman is not here to kill many small units. And so, yeah, taking away its damage um, is not really what you want. It's here for the big damage, and that's what it should have. Um, and the double shot is doubling down on that, literally. Um, and cost of reload time, and it's more of a last attempt kind of thing. If you don't quite have the damage against enemy giant units, because they're maybe a bit too high level or so for your normal marksman, uh, go in for double shot so that you s might get out a bit more damage there, and maybe a bit more burst damage out. Uh, to kill those giant units, then double shot can come in nicely. It's the ability that I buy the least out of these abilities here, though. Uh, range is one that you always want to have. Um, it allows you to stay ahead of phoenixes, allows you to win marksman battles as well, as your marksman will shoot first, which is major, because they one-shot each other if they're on the same level. And elite marksman, then, is the one where you often end up as well. If you play Marksman early in the game, they level up quite nicely, and then Elite Marksman really means that they are staying efficient in the late game. They still hit these giant units nicely. They hit um, any Steel Balls that might be high level, or uh, Sledgehammers on the other side that might be higher level, or might have damage sharing pretty nicely as well. So Elite Marksman there, really good in the late game. Absolutely essential upgrade in my eyes. And then Electronic Shot is an uh, ability that is also some that one that you have to spread out throughout your build you want to have a couple of units with electromagnetic shots uh, so that you always can opt in into one of those so if the enemy has a unit with an ability that is countering you like for example uh, they have little crawlers with acid or so you want to have a unit that you can opt into with electromagnetic shot or uh, they have absorption melting points that are too tanky because they heal themselves all the time you want to have a unit like uh, like this here uh, that you can opt into and if you look at my complete build i have four different units that can deactivate the enemy here arc light storm caller and melting point and the marksman uh, and one of those usually always fits the scenario to deactivate the enemy and take that ability away that is countering you so electromagnetic shot on the marksman for that reason on the Vulcan, we go pretty basic as well. Um, we go range, we go ignite. Ignite is basically allowing your Vulcan to be an omnipre uh, like hard counter to, well, like not a counter, but efficient against anything. Like ignite means that if the enemy doesn't build any more small units, and in the late game your Vulcan comes up and just stands there, and after they burned away the three, four crawlers that they are supposed to burn away, they just stand there forever and don't deal damage to the enemy. With Ignite, they start to deal damage to the enemy, because it is hit point based, and no matter how tanky the enemy will, is, they will suffer consequences for being hit by you. So it is a nice thing to opt into in the later stage of the game to really do some damage. Range uh, is nice to... Uh, stay behind your fangs and crawlers a bit more uh, to get not hit too much before you arrive at the enemy um, to hit the enemy crawlers before they arrive at you so always a nice one to have as well incendiary bombs is or using uh, especially nice against if the enemy has some mustangs and so on and if they are out of position or uh, marksmen then you can set the ground to place. You just want to be careful that you don't have too many small units yourself that can run into the fire. It's a bit of a two-edged sword. 
So you need to be careful with these incendiary bombs. They also get blocked by barriers. So if the enemy already has fortresses, you don't want to use this. But if they don't have fortresses yet, and if they have something like Mustangs or like really a lot, a lot of small units or low hit point units like uh, Stormcallers, Mustangs, especially in the real line where you can't quite reach them usually, uh, the incendiary bombs allow you to shoot them there to set the place and let the enemy suffer. Uh, by uh, from taking the damage here and then scorching flames means that you kill off the mid tier units a bit more efficiently as well and it's like if the enemy has a lot of mid tier units you might want to opt into scorching flames instead of ignite if they have small crawlers and then uh, heavy units you want to use the ignites uh, as the ignite will do more for you there um, obviously scorching flames helps you out a bit against higher level small units compared to Ignite, like if they have level 4 crawlers or so, your uh, Vulcan might take a bit too long with its normal damage, then Scorching Flames does the job for you to get it up there to even a level 1 Vulcan being able to counter those level 4 crawlers then still really efficiently. So yeah, these are the Vulcan ones. The best partner one is an interesting one to opt in. I don't think the armored one is too important because it's only good against small units and those don't survive against you usually anyway. Plus, they don't deal the most damage against you anyway. And against the higher hitting units, it doesn't help you. Um, the best partner here. Yeah, having the sniper can be interesting, but it limits you to usually the ones where you have marksmen anyways. Because a marksman without abilities is not that amazing. And you usually don't have that many Vulcans that you get an amazing amount of marksmen out of this. So, yeah, it sounds cool on paper. Not a big fan. And I... With Sticky Oil Bomb, I'm not quite sure why you should take it if you have Incendiary Bombs already. I guess if you use both, you can have even more things of flame because the oil can burn, but I think the Incendiary Bomb already is enough in that regard, so I don't think you need the Sticky Bomb there. And yeah, let's move on to the next unit, which is the Melting Point. And here we have Energy Observation, one of the most important upgrades on this, allowing it to regain hit points, giving it 60% more hit points, so it is really tanky already thanks to the upgrade and then the being able to heal itself often is making the difference between winning a round and losing a round as if they fight against fortresses and that means that the fortresses just won't kill it and then the melting point will be able to have enough time to beam up and kill it plus if you have long range units behind it then melting points often can be used as a tank um if the melting point is the, your most rearward unit and you have a lot of CQC units in front of it, you shouldn't use this. Um, ranged helps you having the range advantage against uh, overlords and against uh, something like fortress, which is really important if they are already leveled and you bring in a level 1 melting pot. Because otherwise the melting point will die before it can get its beam high enough up. And with that, you outrange them, so your beam will have more time to work and go up to the power level where it doesn't really matter which level the enemy uh, giant unit is. Just obviously, you want to use the melting point mostly against giant units or uh, like something like a rhino. That with the range, you have enough time to beam those away before they can hit you hard enough. Uh, the um, multiple target one can be quite nice against something like enemy steel bolts or if the enemy has a lot of small units next to their big unit as well it's not the one that i use particularly often usually it's a bit of a admitting of defeat um because if you need to use your melting point for multi-target purposes then it means that your other units failed at their job um so i'm not the biggest fan of it but it's a decent ability and then electronic magnetic barrage is a nice mass disabler so if the enemy plays a lot of ability this is nice and i think this one is better than the other two crawler summoning sounds decent on paper but then you realize it only spawns half a group of crawlers and it only spawns them at 30 seconds which is way longer than for example at the um fortress where you have it all 28 seconds plus you have 12 things which is a good bit more than half a squadron of 16 so, like, you spawn more fangs percentage-wise, plus you spawn them uh, quicker compared to the Melting Point's Crawler ability, which is the same price. So, yeah, not a big fan of the Crawler summoning. Also, Crawler and Melting Point, not the best combo, but not the best synergy. So, that is not too helpful. And then the armor one, 
you don't want to fight small units with this anyways. The 30% extra hit point are nice, but the Absorbation one gives you more hit points anyways. And usually small little units are not the problem, or if they are the problem, this is not the solution. Because it won't help your melting points against crawlers, because your melting points still will take 5,000 years to kill them anyways. So armor enhancement in my eyes, not an option either. Um, Rhino, we go with the classic nuke Rhino. You can play the Rhino a bit more as a tank with heal as well, but since they got nerfed in that regard a bit lately, or like quite a bit over the last couple of patches, I don't see them that helpful in that. So I still think nuke Rhinos are the way to go. And if you go to nuke Rhino, you want to go full nuke Rhino. And then photon coating is nice to allow them to really get in there. And power armor also means that they can't be slowed by any electromagnetic shots or similar things. We have the mechanical range making them even faster, making them hit faster so that they can shoot through small units. Me me uh, mechanical range may be the one thing that you could change out versus Whirlwind. Uh, but Whirlwind is pretty expensive, so I usually would go for the me mechanical range. And then you want to have them die and use the nuke to kill the enemy so that they will have to use something with electromagnetic shot or similar things to really be able to get rid of you. Still a, mid, a bit of a mid-game unit here, the Rhino. You want to finish the game somewhat early on, otherwise it falls off quite heavily in the late game. But it's a cool unit, and yeah, the nuke one is a legendary one that we will see a lot in gameplay at the moment. Wasp is a tight, uh, tough one to decide on how to build. Um, as yeah, they're they have a lot of cool damage upgrades and so on in all regards. But the wasp set itself, it's not the most amazing stats beast itself. It's it is flexible and it can do some interesting things. And I have a really interesting replay coming up soon with it. Um, but uh, you have to be a bit careful here, and that's what I did here. I um, and I went for energy shield to give them the. Survivability, really helpful against Phoenixes, really helpful against Marksmen, um, and even helpful against uh, something like Overlords and so on as well, uh, allowing them to survive. And then I went with extra range, which is quite interesting, and because that gives you more range than enemy Fangs, which means that you start countering Fangs really hard. And if you combine it with Elite Marksmen and Aerial Dominance, you also outrange the normal range of Mustangs um, often. And the only time where you want to invest into wasps and into upgrades, especially for them, is when you go hard wasps anyway, and then you need these upgrades here. You need energy shield, um, you need elite marksman, and ignite is really, really nice to help you, because you have a lot of these guys flying around to kill giant units as well, you, to kill something like a fortress, to kill something like an overlord. So the ignite here can come in really nice as well. And is in my eyes more important and more versatile than the crown specialization, for example, which gives you 200% extra damage against crown units, which can be nice as well, but then overlords still kill you, whilst the small units you kill with your spe st standard stacks aren't elite marksmen anyways. Plus, elite marksman has the advantage that it also gives you range, which really, really helps with these wasps. So, I like this one here more. I see a lot of people using crown specialization. Which is decent. I see a lot of people using Jump Drive, but I feel like this is always... Like, yeah, it sounds good on paper, but... Like, spawning them on the flank, then the enemy needs to counter it, but the enemy will still counter it with the same unit. It will be Mustangs, and no matter where the Mustangs stay, they will be good against the Wasps, no matter where your Wasps stay, and they will have one on each flank, so the Jump Drive doesn't really help you too, too much against that. And I think it's worse than people think. Like, yeah, it's a cheap upgrade and so on, but there's a reason why it is so cheap. The five extra movement speed are decent, but I think it's the range is more important. So that's why I went against jumps to drive and went for the range here instead. Um, and then we go to the counter unit of the wasps that we just talked about, and that is the Mustang. Missile interception, uh, range, aerial specialization, and bullets. Because it obviously is good enough against small units. I don't think you need that. Uh, the armor-piercing bullet is if the enemy... Starts with small units and then have some missile units, and you already have some high level Mustangs. You might as well go for some extra damage, so you do with some damage there as well. Ranged helps you out staying away from some of the counters for a bit longer, and especially helpful staying behind your uh, sledgehammers or so. Like if you have some other units with similar range or same range, staying behind them. Like if the enemy has Stormcrawlers, 
uh, so that the, the Mustangs stop behind your Sledgehammers, and your Sledgehammers take the punishment, but your Mustangs can deal some damage. Missile Interceptor, obviously great against sad uh, Stormcallers, uh, can do some nice job there, um, and makes them to a nice counter to that. It got buffed decently over time, and it is not stopping it at all, uh, uh, like fully, especially as it gets worse over time, but it, especially in Stormcaller versus Stormcaller battles, can make the difference of you getting the first couple of hits in, and then you winning the game. And Aerial Specialist is a no-brainer. Um, helps you against Phoenixes, helps you against Overlords that are not upgraded, and air transitions of the enemy can be painful, so having a unit that has this is nice. Um, yeah, obviously Wasps get completely annihilated if you use this. And then we have the Steel Ball. Steel Ball here, quite a nice unit. Um, can do energy absorption as well, which makes it more tanky, which allows it to heal. And especially if the enemy has low hit uh, damage combos that go for long drawn out fights, like if they have sledgehammers and fangs and uh, and arc lights and stuff like that, then the energy absorption really allows you to stick in those fights. And another unit uh, ability that does help with that is damage sharing, which makes you tankier and allows you to um, really survive the fights. It goes well with energy absorption as well. As You want to have your steel bots survive to get close enough to the enemy, and if you don't have the damage sharing, often marksmen shoot two of them away, and then the rest doesn't deal enough damage, and so on, and then they're a bit pointless, so damage sharing really counters that. And yeah, as long as the enemy doesn't play steel bots themselves, it's a great ability. And even if they play steel bots, you usually kill them before they kill you. So that's not a massive problem either. Uh, mechanical division. If the enemy plays too many single target hitting units against you, like a lot of marksmen and uh, phoenixes and so on, then mechanical division will get them because the crawlers that they will spawn uh, will take away the enemy tar targeting and then they might not focus you on other steel bolts down as much, or they might not hit the units behind it, even after your steel bolts die, giving a nice amount of extra tankiness. It's a quite meta upgrade at the moment, and it can do a lot of work. And armor enhancement means that steel bolts are CQC units. You will face a lot of fang and crawler damage, and mustang damage, and with armor enhancement it means that those units just don't deal damage to you anymore, as, as least as they are the if they are at the same level, and if they are higher, it, they still get a good amount of reduced damage against you. So armor enhancement here can be really nice if you play this against a Mustang-heavy enemy or a uh, Fang-heavy enemy. Yes, you won't kill those units, but you, the units behind your Steel Bolts will have a lot more time to kill the enemy units, allowing your Steel Bolts to really become the tanks that you want them to be. And if you get all these three upgrades here, uh, you are super tanky, which is really lovely. And sometimes you get early Steel Bolts that level up really quick, and then if you give them those upgrades, they just become an absolute pain for the enemy to deal with. And basically anything but a melting point can't kill them anymore, which is really cool to see. And then we come to the Fang, and for the Fang, the most important upgrade is the Portable Shield in my eyes. It makes them so survival so much more survivable, especially against something like Marksmen, but even against Arc Lights and so on. It just means that it basically need the, the enemy needs to double the time to clean them up. So if you have a line of like 5-6 fangs, um, this upgrade is super essential. That's why it's also so pricey. It is quite uh, important there. And then the other important upgrade is Ignite. Um, fangs already deal decent damage against small units. With Ignite, they become really scary for everything bigger as well. And if you have the portable shield, it means that you're, you will have longer drawn out fights so that Ignite really starts to work. And these units here can really start to melt away sledgehammers, they can start away, uh, to melt away fortresses, and so on and so on. So Ignite here can be nice. Range is important if you play something uh, against some air units especially. Can be really helpful against Overlords and co. And Mechanical range, uh, Rage can be nice if you play some flanking combos and uh, stuff like that. And if you really want to bridge the gap, though it's the ability that I use the least, but I think it's better than Armor Piercing Bullet because Armor Piercing Bullet gives you 50% more damage, but tanks don't really have that damage in the first place, and they often just don't get close enough to shoot the enemy in the matchups where this would be helpful. Like the units that this would be helpful against, like Mustangs and Co., they kill you anyways. 
And yeah, against crawlers, I find like mechanic the rate of fire is better anyways. So armor piercing bullet, not that great. I hope we see more abilities for the Fang in the future. Would love to see maybe a melee upgrade or so that they actually go melee um, and get a sword or something like that. That would be cool. But we will see how it goes. Um, Fang, for sure, a lot of options to come for this. Let's see what they make of it. Crawler, a pretty cool unit as well. Um, yeah, we go for Replicate because if in Crawler versus Crawler battles, this could be really nice. It allows you to just get insane amount of units. But the favorite upgrade of mine is Impictral. 200% extra damage means that you one-shot enemy crawlers of the same level and that if your crawler gets close to anything, even if they have armor upgrades, you still do good damage. Um, it, it really allows you to do a lot of damage. And then Subterranean Blitz is your mobility upgrade. That's why we don't have Mechanic Rage on top. Subterranean Blitz already gives you increased movement speed and reduces your... Um, damage that you receive, allowing crawlers to actually get close, uh, which is important if the enemy does use a lot of arc lights and so on, and you used a lot of crawlers in the early game, and you kind of need them as your damage dealers, then Subterranean Blitz is the one to go for. Plus, it also make, means just that they are tankier, that they take more shots to kill, allowing your other units to hit the enemy harder. And then Acid Explosion is the one that everybody hates to play against. If you have any giant units, uh, if the enemy plays too many giant units, just uh, or ground giants especially, just use acid. Especially if you have air on top of this, then the enemy will have to walk through the acid and they just will have their line melt. They need to find a solution for this and it's super hard to play around enemies with acid explosion. So yeah, this can be really, really nice. You obviously don't play it if you have your own, uh, own uh, steel balls or anything next to it, because then it will backfire and hit your own units even just as hard as it hits the enemy, especially if they have something that they makes the crawler explode early. So you need to be a bit careful with acid explosion, but it can win you games outright, and it is a fantastic upgrade and a really cool upgrade as well. Uh, Overlord, we have a lot of options as well. This is one of the harder ones to build, and up until the, least, uh, the most recent upgrade, I played a lot of photon emission, but they reduced it from 21 seconds where this was active to 16 seconds, and that is effectively percentage-wise an even bigger hit because uh, those five extra seconds were five extra seconds in combat usually, whilst the first couple of seconds in the co uh, battle obviously don't really ha have combat, so like it is only really effective for the first 11 seconds often. Like, unless you have a really aggressive lineup, and then the photo information is still good. But if your units take a while to get to the enemy, and your enemy units take a while to get to you, and the first shots only fly like five seconds after, it's only an 11 seconds instead of a 16 seconds ability now, making it a lot weaker. So I went for more uh, away from a support overlord that made the rest of your board really strong to more on its own overlord using overlord artillery. That gives it great killing power, especially against units like uh, like mid-sized units like sledgehammers, arc lights, um, but even against big units like fortresses and so on. This extra damage here, twelve thousand damage every three seconds, is really strong and really scary. Um, and then I went for the mothership, which pr produce uh, allows you to produce wasps. Super important to deal with marksmen and any other like single target damage units so that they don't kill your overlord. It's still by far the most the lowest hit point giant. So you don't want to get hit with it. Um and but if you get hit, there are some nice things here as well. The armor enhancement gives you 30% more hit points, which is nice, but the 60% uh, 60 damage block is more important because a lot of people rely too much on Mustangs and too much on Fangs to counter Overlords. And with the Armor Enhancement upgrade, you can nullify the damage of Mustangs against you, especially, like, if they are the same level to you, they just don't deal any damage to your Overlord anymore. Same goes for Fangs. So, if you can level your Overlord a bit, it basically makes them immune to those kind of units, and the enemy will have to find a fully new setup of units to deal with you. And it's a pretty cheap upgrade. It's only 200 points, and then Field Maintenance is even cheaper. And then one can be really clutch in fights where it's, the enemy doesn't have too many hit, air-hitting units and they fight your overlord kind of directly. 
and then your overlord often can outlast their damage if the dps is not high enough they they might be able to regen against it and for only 100 points this often can swing games especially as the overlord will do 400 damage to the enemy face if it survives so keeping it survivable is quite important because they will finish rounds for you if the enemy can't deal with it and for 100 points this upgrade can change fights so so heavily um yeah the other ones here don't think it needs more rate of fire jump drive i already went over with the wasps here it's even more expensive now it was quite nice early on because yeah this changes the power level on flanks way more than wasps jumping around but now for 150 point i just don't think it's worth it plus it increases the speed which you really don't kind of want for the overlord because it means that it might fly ahead of your other units and that's not where you want your overlord um then we go for the stormcaller a yeah, nice unit as well where we have range enhancement we have high explosions of ammo ammo we have electromagnetic explosion and we have incendiary bombs and the reason for that is incendiary bombs just makes it so that even your missiles against something like crawlers and so on still become quite effective like if the enemy has crawler mustang combos your misses against the crawlers still means that the mustangs behind the enemy will drive toward and die and that is really nice you have to be a bit careful here and range means that you will stay ahead of enemy marksmen and so on in range that's pretty important you have to be a bit careful with the range one because if the enemy has a fast combo having more range on your storm colors means that they miss even harder against the enemy units because the missiles are in the air longer so the range enhancement can actually be a bit backfiring and you don't always want to get that like it sounds good on paper to always get this it's not always good uh, like not even just seeing the price but it also sometimes just backfires and then high explosion um is an interesting one that i actually wanted to change for high anti-tank shells um, it, we already do decent aoe i just think sometimes you lack the extra power to deal with uh, sledgehammers and so on and it, especially if the sledgehammers have repair um you want to deal a bit more extra damage there and the high explosive anti-tank shells is what gets you there plus then the electromagnetic explosion is nice because you hit a lot of units and like you spread your damage and deactivating the enemy abilities of this is really important and it's one of the four units that i call upon on deactivating the enemy as i don't have it on wasps or co so stormcaller is one of those that has to carry this role for me and then we go in to the sledgehammer which is often i often see with these abilities here but i believe sledgehammers don't deal enough damage to give them damage dealer abilities um per se so i go full tank mode i go armor enhancement i go damage sharing i go repairs and the way you want to go with that is damage uh, sharing and then into field maintenance usually or damage sharing and into armor armor means mustangs crawlers and to some extent arc lights and co just don't deal that much damage to you anymore um, you don't get any extra hit points here but you can do that with damage sharing plus damage sharing is really important to keep you alive against marksmen and co and field maintenance a bit useless without damage sharing often because there are enemy units that one shot or two shot you anyways so you won't have enough time to heal against those if you get field maintenance without damage sharing with damage sharing there is no unit that one shots you anymore and the field maintenance allows you to always get some hit points back to always have efficient repairs so these two should always come together and it should always be damage sharing first it's the cheaper upgrade it's the better upgrade and then field maintenance and yes damage sharing is scary against steel bolts and is scary against um enemy um melting points but against steel bolts you usually should go for combos that you can kill the steel bolts before they hit you anyways before they hit you too much plus you can there is that's the moment where i use the armor bu piercing bullets and with the armor piercing bullets your sledgehammers hit the uh, steel bolts often high hard enough that the steel bolts die before they can kill you and against melting points i mean you often also play fangs and so on you just have to play positionally clever so that the enemy uh, beam units don't hit your sledgehammers first like the damage sharing outside of that is amazing and it's hard for the enemy to have that many beam units to and while still countering the rest of your composition that they always can allow to hit the sledgehammers efficiently especially as you usually will have more sledgehammer units than the enemy will have beam units so yeah 
It's really here for the tanking. It doesn't kill super much itself. It still is pretty efficient with its AoE and so on, but that's not usually what you get it for. You get it for the tanking, and then you want to have some high DPS units behind it. You want to have some Mustangs. You want to have some um, Marksmen. You want to have some Phoenixes behind this, whilst the Sledgehammer just does have the endurance to survive and survive and survive. It doesn't counter anything itself, but it is an amazing tank, and that's what you expect out of it. Next unit is the Hacker, which finally got a new ability here with multiple control, which was a bit overrated when it first came out. I saw too many use people using it. It is an ability that can be nice uh, if necessary, if the enemy puts too many small things in front of their big things that you usually want to control. But usually you want to only use the Hacker against mid-sized and big tier units, and then you don't use this. Um, what the hacker does really nicely is that it is your second unit that can use barrier, and barrier is just such an insanely strong ability, so you absolutely want to have that. Um, range enhancement can be nice, so that it allows the hacker to stay a bit behind you to and to start hitting enemy units like rhinos and so on earlier, so that they really that you for sure get the takeover. Because if the enemy takes more damage than the hacker process, then the unit still dies and you don't get it which is especially dangerous against nuked rhinos, as that's a unit where you really want to have the hacker, so that you can send the nuked rhino the other way. And in those situations, you also want to have the enhanced control, because this uh, gives you the unit back with full hit points, which is really important for any kind of beefy unit on the enemy side that you want to control, and that's where hackers obviously are best. And like, for example, against nuked rhinos, if you take it over and it you don't have this, that still means the enemy will shoot it and it will most likely die in your rows and will blow away your rows of units. And if you take it over with this though, the, the new Rhino will be full hit points and will be able to go back to the enemy line and explode there. So yeah, Hacker here, pretty nice unit, quite cool, uh, loving it lately, quite good unit. Arclight, one of the biggest jump ups lately as well, got a good couple of buffs. And it's a pretty cool unit as well. Um, I use it as a real line unit, uh, or as a second line unit. And that's why I don't have armor enhancement in here. It's one of my electromagnetic shot units. So yeah, once more deactivating. Really important against crawlers with um, acid to activate, deactivate those guys. And then this guy also can become an all-rounder, especially if you get the 100% extra XP rate or you start with veteran units and arc lights. Uh, the elite marksman can be insanely strong and then you can often play mass arc lights units. There is a YouTube video about me playing with that as well. And the increased attack damage then helps out quite a bit as well, allowing you to deal with those uh, mid-sized units that you, the arc light usually is not quite good against. But if you have a lot of arc lights, getting this they also will start to kill off um, sto uh, enemy units like uh, multi uh, melting points, not so much, but more uh, enemy uh, steel bolts, enemy sledgehammers, and so on. And then the anti-air upgrade makes them an absolute all-rounder, especially if you have elite marksmen that they have a bit more range. Um, as this makes them hard counters to wasps, as it's AOE against wasps, which are low hit point units in the sky. And this, together with the charge shot or the lead marksman, also does make them pretty solid against enemy um, overlords. And if you have then an electromagnetic shot, it also means that overlord, repair, overlord, um, artillery, and so on will be deactivated. So the anti air upgrade here, pretty important as well. Um, against enemy phoenixes, obviously it doesn't make them too, too good, but they still can come in in a pinch if necessary there. So I would not recommend anti-air upgrade against the enemy to, who plays phoenixes. I would usually recommend going for something else that counters the phoenixes, as the Arclights still are victims of the phoenixes who have more range and more damage and more and two models. And then last unit are set phoenixes, which I use for late game units. Like this, in my eyes, is the best scaling unit in the game. And it has three great abilities helping you with that. And those abilities are Quantum Assembly, Lead Marksman, and Range Enhancement. Range Enhancement means that your enemy, uh, and which is of, it's often the one that you get first, means that these guys outrange normal marksmen, means that they always shoot, means that 
small, uh, slow enemy units will take a while to get to you. And it means that you will stay behind your tanks most, most of the time. So that is really nice and allows you a, a lot of extra damage, a lot of extra leveling with the phoenixes before they get killed. Elite Marksman then jumps on that and gives you really, really high DPS, allowing these phoenixes to murder anything. The biggest giant units, no problem. Phoenixes have them covered. And then Quantum Reassembly uh, allows you to respawn your phoenixes every 20 seconds. Also makes sense with the name. And it's, uh, yeah, after 20 seconds, they will be fully restored after they died. And this is insanely strong if you use phoenixes on flanks and, and like spread them out. Because then when some of your phoenixes die on one flank, they will come in on the other flank. Will, first of all, create an overwhelming force there. It also means that you just have way more hit points and way more units than the enemy expects. Plus, if the enemy, if the fight goes gets drawn out, then... The spawning in phoenixes will deal damage again, and if you then spawn, like go down to two phoenixes, but you spawn back up to 14, you do 14 damage to the enemy. You still do 1,400 damage, and which often allows you to finish the enemy quicker than you would do otherwise. So quantum reassembly, really, really good upgrade, making the phoenix the most late game, uh, like the best late game unit in my eyes, even better than some or like all of the giants. Um, as the range, the level stacking here is insane. So absolutely loving the Phoenix, and they are usually, if I have the feeling the game go long, they are usually my go-to unit. And yeah, that's the build here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it was helpful to you. It got a bit longer than I expected, but yeah, a lot to talk about here. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching. See you, and bye-bye.